Hello, welcome to Nationwide on NTA. I am Minna Daniels. Nationwide is streaming live on Facebook. You can also follow us across all social media for updates. Let's begin with the 64th uh, Independence Anniversary. A special church service commemorating Nigeria's 64th Independence Anniversary has been concluded at the Ecumenical Center Abuja with Clarice calling for unity and expressing hope for Nigeria's greatness. Most Reverend Michael Akinwale in his sermon centered on Martin Luther King Jr.'s Have a Dream, I urged Nigerians to be nationalistic in their outlook so that the country will leave a legacy of excellence for generations to come and make a lasting impact on other nations. The healing of our nation is in the hands of God. Our hope as a nation rests solely on God. Today, as we celebrate 64 years of nationhood, 64 years, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. There are several reasons why we need to give thanks to God. It has been 64 years of national unity, 64 years of divine providence. Indeed, it has been 64 years of drawing strength from our diversity in spite of our ideological differences. Leaders, including the President of the Senate, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Defense Chief, representatives of service chiefs, and former President Olushe Gumabasanjo attended the landmark service. Nigeria gained independence from British colonial rule on October 1st, 1960, adopting a federal system with an elected prime minister and ceremonial head of state. This anniversary serves as a reflection of the country's journey and its diversity with a federal structure comprising three regions, eastern, northern and western. In a related news, the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, George Akome, announced that Nigeria's 64th independence anniversary would be low-key. Past independence anniversary events have featured interdenominational church services, such as this one held at the National Ecumenical Center in Abuja. The service concluded with the national anthem and symbolic cutting of the national cake. Today, September 29th, the world comes together to mark World Heart Day, a day dedicated to raising awareness about cardiovascular diseases and the importance of keeping our hearts healthy. And it's a reminder that a strong and healthy heart is the foundation for a long, fulfilling life. And in commemoration of the event this year, the Association of Cardiovascular and Thoracic Surgeons of Nigeria, Axon, is calling for more efforts to improve heart health in the country. They highlight significant progress, including the establishment of cardiac centers and increase in complex open heart surgeries. However, the association stresses the need for continued support to sustain these advancements. Axon also points out the high costs of cardiac surgeries due to important medical supplies and urge the government to provide subsidies and waive important duties to make surgeries more affordable. This year's theme, Use Heart for Every Heart, urges everyone to care for not just their own hearts, but also the hearts of others and the environment. It is often said that the safety of the people is the highest law in Nigeria. This principle is upheld by the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAC, which ensures the safety of food and drugs. In a special report for the Nigeria's 64th independence, Haman Jabani examines NAFDAC's regulatory efforts and the country's commitment to a healthier future through a hybrid healthcare system. 
He who has health has hope, and he who has hope has everything. This captures the essence of public health. Public health is all about maintaining the quality and safety of the food and drugs we consume. Food safety and effective regulated drugs are vital to preventing diseases and promoting long-term health, which is the foundation of any thriving society. Consumers of food and drugs prioritize quality and safety, two key attributes that foster confidence in a country's healthcare system. For decades, the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAPDAG, has been at the forefront of regulating food, drugs, and other products. The agency's leadership highlights that extensive reforms and innovation are enhancing access to safe and effective products. We are more focused, we are more driven. For substandard falsified medicine, there are about five regulatory uh, directorates that have to work together on a daily basis, comparing notes. How do we do this better? How do we do this better? And I used to tell people that, oh, maturity level three is not one off. It's continuous process. Thanks to advanced technology, NAVDAC reports a significant reduction in the circulation of substandard and fake drugs in the country. Are we there? No. We need a lot of support from the government, from international partners in terms of equipment. But through our savings, we've been able to buy many pieces of equipment. Through dedicated staff and a robust regulatory framework, the agency has effectively managed the manufacturing and importation of quality products. However, gaps remain. Millions of Nigerians pay out of pocket for their medications and pockets of illegal manufacturing outlets escape the surveillance radar of NABDAC officials. There is also competing demand for traditional or alternative medicine, with millions turning to local herbs and products for treatment. These plants are cultivated in a scientific way. Then we harness these plants to make medicines out of it in different pharmaceutical dosage forms. But we are ready to ensure that traditional medicine is fully developed and the benefit, the huge benefit, both in terms of health and in terms of national revenue for the aid for the country is fully optimized. The development of this hybrid healthcare delivery system is indeed considered a game changer for Nigeria's healthcare sector. And in terms of safety and standard, this innovative approach will ensure that both traditional and modern practices are held to the highest benchmark, fostering public trust in the healthcare system. Hamad Jabani, NTA News. Kano State Government is evolving strategies to ensure total immunization coverage against life-threatening diseases among children. Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf stated this during the flag of the 2024 polio immunization campaign in Dawakin Kudu, local government area. Abudlahi Mustafa has the details. Dawakin Kudu is a local government area identified for its low immunization coverage in recent years. As Kano State Government moves to push away wild polio virus and other life-threatening diseases among children, the area was used to flag of the 2024 immunization campaign. Governor Abakabir Yusuf led the charge by personally administering vaccines to children under five. Let me say that the rising number of circulating viruses in the country, and in particular Kano, necessitated the conduct of the supplementary national immunization days, rounds of well-structured campaigns in the year 2024. The campaign, which also saw the involvement of Deputy Governor Aminu Abdesalam, is aligned with the Global Polio Eradication Initiative's strategy to halt the transmission of the virus. It has been supported by development partners that provide technical expertise in facilitating vaccination efforts and enhancing surveillance to ensure the success of the mission. In Kano, Abdullahi Mustafa, NTA News. President Bola Ahmed Chenobu has appointed Mr. Joseph Olasukomi 
Tegbe as Director General and Global Liaison for the Nigeria-China Strategic Partnership reached by the two countries during the President's visit in early September. Tegbe, a 1988 first-class graduate in civil engineering from Abafemi Awolowo University, will report directly to the President. He is a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, FCA, and a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. He will immediately submit a strategic action plan to enable Nigeria benefit from the agreements between the two countries in Belgium. As the Caesar of the strategic partnership, he will lead day-to-day -day operations, engage continuously with the Chinese counterparts, and ensure that all deliverables are met and synchronized with national development goals. As the Caesar of the strategic partnership, he will lead the day-to-day -day operations. Vice President Kashim Shatima has returned to Abuja after successfully representing President Bola Ahmed Tunubu at the just concluded 79th session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York. The Vice President had presented Nigeria's national statement at the general debate as well as engaged in several bilateral meetings and numerous sideline events at the General Assembly. He will proceed to join President Bola Akme Tunubu to mark some events put together as part of activities commemorating Nigeria's 64th independence anniversary. The Arawa Tech First 2024 took Carnel by storm, spotlight and innovation as a catalyst for economic growth. With the theme empowering innovation for economic growth, it unites visionaries and leaders to advocate for building a tech-driven ecosystem in northern Nigeria. Industry experts highlighted early tech education as vital for self-reliance in a rapidly automating world, setting the stage for a future of sustainable development. Fatima Sanisi Karaye reports. With that report will come uh, very much in the course of this bulletin. We now take a short breather. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The renewed help initiative of the First Lady of Nigeria, Senator Olure Mitunubu, has once again put smiles on the faces of petty traders in River State as she flagged off the Economic Empowerment Recapitalization Grant for 1,000 women in the state. Osina Chisamo reports that the gesture is in collaboration with the office of the wife of the River State Governor, Lady Valerie Fubara, who also represented her at the event. God will bless her, give her long life. The Renewed Hope Initiative of the First Lady of Nigeria, Senator Oluremi Tenebo, has continued to impact the livelihood of women across the country. The flag of, of the Renewed Hope Initiative Economic Empowerment Program is providing recapitalization grants of 50,000 naira each for 1,000 women petty traders in River State. The initiative, which is in partnership with the office of the wife of the River State Governor Lady Fubara is restoring hope of women and empowering them to be financially stable. She thanked the mother of the nation for her dreams and vision for a better country for women and girls. We recognize that empowering women economically is not just a moral imperative but a strategic one. When women thrive, their families thrive and by extension our communities and nation prosper. In River State, the coordinators painstakingly selected petty traders from rural communities to benefit from the gesture. We want to thank Her Excellency Senator Tinubu and also by extension thank our mother, the state mother that is here, Dem Valerie, for always consistently thinking of us. These beneficiaries are at their hands of our local economies in the 23 local government areas, including non-indigent and NCWS of our states. And I am satisfied that these grants will help them re-energize their petty businesses. 
The event also featured presentation of exercise books to the Commissioner of Education, Dr. Ovi Chukuma, for onward distribution to public schools in River State. In Port Harcourt, Osinachi Samuel, NTA News. The National Hydroelectric Power Producing Areas Development Commission, and Hyperdeck, has distributed 33 modern fiberglass boats to 10 of its benefiting states to checkmate incidences of maritime tragedies in their various communities. The inauguration of the intervention initiative, which was held at the NHYPADEC headquarters in Mina, Niger State, is part of the Commission's drive to make water transportation a safer source of livelihood. Fatima Usman reports. The choice of the 33 fiberglass boats by the National Hydroelectric Power Producing Areas Development Commission and Hyperdeck to 10 of its benefiting states is for its significant features of durability and safety as the boats offer superior navigation over wooden ones which are vital in mitigating the reoccurrence of boat mishaps that have plagued the riverine communities over the years. The initiative is also part of the Commission's broader vision to revolutionize marine transportation in all and hyperdeck communities by strengthening trade networks and enhancing community connectivity. Hyperdeck is actively protecting lives, easing transportation and ensuring that our waterways remain a source of livelihood. These boats are not simply a gift. They are a responsibility. You must ensure that they are maintained properly. Safety protocols are adhered to and that they are used for the benefit of all. People of vested interest at the engagement, including Managing Director Niwa, described the inauguration of the modern glass boat as life-changing for all waterways users, even as they solicit for more collaborative efforts in this sector. The 10 states that benefited from this gesture of the N hyperdeck include Niger, Kogi, Kwara, Kaduna, Plateau, Nasalawa, Kebi, Benue, Taraba, and Bauchi states. In Mina, I am Fatima Usman, NTA News. About 400 farmers affected by flooding in Ezinesi, Oduma, Obanko communities in Aniri, local government area of Enugu state, have been gifted power tiler machines and farm inputs. The gesture is a collaboration between the state government and the Nigerian Community Action for Resilience and Economic Stimulus, NGKs. Chika Ugu has the report. For its aerial and huge land mass, rich soil, favorable climate and power, Enugu State has been the highest producer of cassava and also harvest rice, maize and other farm produce in large quantities. However, the people of Aniri, known to produce most of this farm produce, have been battling with flooding, which has affected their farmland and displaced some others. This situation necessitated the gesture by the state government, delivering the machines to the flood-affected farmers from Ezineze Oduma, and Obanku communities. The governor, represented by the Commissioner for Agriculture, explained that the move is in line with the state government's vision to eradicate poverty and also make agriculture attractive to youths. It is a, a gesture from the state government to the people of the uh, to ensure that they do not suffer because of the natural disaster that uh, Responsible for the implementation of NGKs, Fadama conducted the needed assessment of the communities and collated names of beneficiaries. There are inputs such as cassava stem, herbicides, insecticide, and uh, organic fertilizer, which they have voluntarily said that those are the things that can shun the effect of the funds on their lives. Meanwhile, Registered farmers from the 17 local government area of the state were given bags of fertilizers and other farm inputs with assurance of other interventions on the way to help boost agriculture and assist farmers affected by natural disaster. In Enugu, Chika Ugu, NTA News. 
Sultan of Sokoto and President General, Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Mohammed Saad Abubakar, emphasizes the need for the federal government to utilize the research conducted by members of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, NIPS, Kuru Jots, to tackle the issues, to tackle the numerous challenges facing Nigeria. This is during a courtesy call at this palace by the National President of the Alumni Association of the Institute, Ambassador Emmanuel Okafo. Dauhat to Abudlahi reports. The National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, Kourujos, is a policy research institute established in 1979 to provide policy recommendations to the Nigerian government on strategic issues. The National President of the NIPS Alumni, Ambassador Emmanuel Okafo, alongside other eminent Nigerians are in Sokoto State for the annual general meeting of the Sokoto State chapter of the association and took advantage of the opportunity to call on the chairman of the Heritage Council of the association, the Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Saad Abubakar. Ambassador Emmanuel Okafo stated that the wealth of experience possessed by members of the association, including the Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Saad Abubakar, should be utilized by the three tiers of government in Nigeria toward the development of their people. The leader of the delegation described the Sultan as an embodiment of peace with vast experience and stressed the importance of engaging traditional leaders for the entrenchment of good governance considering their closeness to the grassroots. We have done researches on security, economic, political, social issues. We should be given an opportunity to contribute our quota to national development. Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Saad Abubakar advocates prioritizing research carried out by members of the association to find solutions to the country's challenges. Please, double our efforts. Come closer and closer to one another without continuing to talk about bringing solutions to the various problems facing our country. The annual general meeting of the Sokoto State Chapter, attended by the Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Saad Abubakar, saw the emergence of new executives to pilot the affairs of the association for the next two years. In Sokoto, Dalhatu Abdullahi, NTA News. Another break beckons. We'll be right back with more stories. Stay. Thanks for joining us again. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, has made several arrests and seizures across Nigeria, including two wanted kingpins, two ex-convicts, two freight agents, and an auto parts dealer for drug trafficking. And a statement, Director of Media and Advocacy, NDLEA, Femi Baba Femi, indicates that the auto parts dealer, one Ejiofo Nemeka Chukuzie, was arrested for attempting to export heroin and cannabis hidden in lead lamps and sofa legs. Additionally, NDLEA seized various drugs, including tramadol, pentazosine injection and cannabis, destined for the US, UK, Canada, Australia, Thailand and Oman. Other arrests include the wanted drug kingpin, Ajiboye Damilari Samuel, and the community leader, Alaji Bashir Mohammed Tauba. The NDLEA also conducted raids and arrests in several states, including Lagos, Kogi, Castina, Niger, Kano, Plateau, Oyo, and Edo, seizing substantial quantities of illicit substances. The agency continues its war against drug abuse, while that sensitization lectures and advocacy visits nationwide. President Bala Ahmed Chunibu has charged the passing out cadets of the Nigerian Defense Academy to exhibit a high sense of discipline and professionalism if they hope to rise to the zenith of their military career. He stated this in a message during the passing out parade and commissioning ceremony of the 71 regular corps and direct short service corps, 28 Army and 32 Air Force of the Nigerian Defense Academy. Adamu Sunday reports. The passing out parade is a solemn occasion, a moment of transition, a celebration of dedication and sacrifice. These 823 young cadets imbued with the spirit of Nigerian Defense Academy have been forged in the fires of rigorous training. Their character tested and proven. They are ready to answer the call of duty. 
to serve the nation and to defend its sovereignty. These officers carry themselves with a newfound confidence. Their face is filled with a blend of pride and anticipation. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, represented by the Speaker, House of Representatives, Tad Eugene Abbas, tags the officers to always display a high sense of discipline, dedication, commitment, and perseverance if they want to rise to the zenith of their career. Nigeria has spent a lot to train you. Therefore, it is time to give back to the nation. I wish you a very successful career where you will keep making your nation proud. While commending the armed forces in the fight against insurgency in the country, he charged the officers to ensure they carry on with the same vigor and dedication so that the ultimate sacrifice paid by fallen heroes doesn't go in vain. These criminals have tested our soldiers enough. And I'm saying here, enough is enough. I charge all of you to engage these cowards with more military gallantry and sophistication. Some parents of these young officers who could not hide their joy wish them a successful career. Awards of excellence were presented to deserving cadets for their outstanding performances. Some of the graduating cadets now officers in the Nigerian Armed Forces are ready to face the challenges that lies ahead. In Kaduna, Adamu Sunde, NTA News. The Nigerian Army Women Command is enhancing the skills and capacity of its personnel in managing and complementing the efforts of other corps and to support the home front. This is to ensure the well-being and operational success of troops in the fight against banditry and terrorism. This workshop aims to sensitize Nigerian Army personnel on cultivating a happy and peaceful family through intentional and proactive practices. It also focuses on positive parenting and soldiering. Additionally, it will help participants to better understand various support systems and policies put in place by the Nigerian Army to enhance the well-being of personnel and their families. The well-being of our soldiers and their families lies at the heart of the Nigerian Army's transformation. A happy and peaceful family life is not merely a personal advantage for the soldier or officer. It directly contributes to enhance operational efficiency. Soldiers who have a happy and peaceful family often draw additional morale from the assurance of a secured home front to stay more focused and dedicated to their duties. The workshop is aimed at promoting enhanced values and parenting and promoting for efficient performance in their task. The event is focusing on securing the home front to strengthen the front line. The Nigerian Navy has again reassured Nigerians of commitment in fulfilling its corporate social responsibility to its host communities. To further strengthen the existing civil military relationship, the commander, Nigerian Navy ship Soro Komodo Nanmar Leko, gave the assurance during the free educational and medical rhapsody at Debu Community, Southern Ijo local government area of Bayosa State. It took approximately 45 minutes navigating the creeks from Angiama to Debu community in Silga Biasa State, venue of the educational and medical outreach by the Nigerian Navy ship Soro. The commander, Nigerian Navy ship Soro, Komodo Nanman Lekan, on arrival, distributed educational materials to pupils and students of community primary and secondary school debut, materials including mathematical sets, notebooks, pencil, and other educational materials. In our school, we don't have places that we can go and calculate things, and we don't even have much books. So as we provide, as they provide these things for us, we can use it to write. The outreach continued with free medical services rendered by naval medical personnel to the community, including blood pressure check, blood sugar check, hepatitis B and C screening, insecticide-treated nets distribution, 
The warming, amongst others, natives of the Ebu community express gratitude to the Nigerian Navy as they become the latest beneficiaries of the free medical outreach by the Nigerian Navy ship Sorrow. I am so happy. That is why I have come to thank the Nigerian navies for the great thing they have done for us. We have lost so many souls, both the young and the elderly, even the pregnant women. And I think with this treatment, we are, we are sure that all those things will be the things of the past. Commander Nigerian Navy Ship Sorrow, Commodore Nanman Lekang, noted that the medical rhapsody is in line with the Chief of Naval Staff Strategic Directive, which encourages the spirit of service to humanity and commitment to add value to the quality of lives of its host communities. This initiative is part of the Nigerian Navy Ship Solo non kinetic operations aimed at enhancing civil military relations by providing valuable medical and educational assistance to the host community where we normally conduct our operations. Being a strategic player in Nigeria's security sector, the Medical Rhapsody is a strategic platform to strengthen the naval civil military relationship. In Yenegua, Batwaipre Awe, NTA the Governor Council, Federal University Dutse, commends Governor Omar Namade of Jigawa State for transforming the education sector to give chance to the children of the poor to pursue their academic dreams. The Governing Council says this has been done through putting in place policy frameworks that promote education for all and at all levels. Mohammed Musa Askira reports. The council led by Professor Shaibu Obabdrahim says if all states in the country emulate the Jigawa model of educational support, no child would be denied access to quality education in Nigeria. Jigawa government, which provides free education to female pupils and students from primary to university levels, has since last year approved 100% increase of scholarship for Jigawa students across universities in the country. This is costing the states over 700 million naira annually, apart from the payments of examination registration fee for Wayek and NECO to allow candidate seats for the examination, which will clear the pathway for them to get entry into tertiary institutions of learning. Jigawa State has uh, etched its name in the hearts of the people of the university as benefactors, as guides, and as fellow travelers on the journey to making Jigawa State second to none in this country. So as a government, we take it upon ourselves to pay for all the indigenous students in Jigasa and all the investors. Governor Omar Namaji reiterates his administration's commitments to ensure that education is made easy to access by citizens in the state and by supporting the learning institutions to provide conducive environment for teaching and learning for Jigawa people. In Dute, Muhammad Musa Askira, NTA News. Shaping the generations of the girl child as women leaders, innovators and change agents in the society was the focus as the Alma Mater Federal Government Girls College, FGGC, Beda, Niger State, as it prepares to hold its Golden Jubilee tagged 50 Years of Memories, Magic and Milestones. In a media parley, President of the Old Girls Association, Hilda Nko, said the week-long event aims to celebrate half a century of academic excellence, sisterhood, surveys, and life-changing experiences. She added that it would be an opportunity to draw relevant stakeholders to the plight and challenges of Unity Schools, among others. Reflections, recognition of achievements, and forward-looking aspirations for the next generation. This is a celebration for every woman who worked the halls of Federal Government Girls College Bida, for the teachers who nurtured us, and for the friends and families who have supported us in various ways through the years. To say, look, whatever I have is not too little. I will contribute my quota. Somebody else will take it forward from there. And then we make more milestones and more memories and more magic. Selflessness is going to be, is going to be something that the society, not just the society, but even we within ourselves are going to be happy that, oh, we did something and we did it well. The group say charity cannot be claimed unless it's well fed in one's house, hence the alma mater's goal to use the event 
to give back to the school, society and the nation. The federal government has handed a 64 100 capacity CNG buses to labor and student unions to enhance transportation and welfare of citizens. In a ceremony at the State House, Minister of Finance Wale Dun and his counterparts held the landmark event as a step towards utilizing greener energy. The details will come in our subsequent bulletins. About 400 farmers affected by flooding in Ezinesi Oduma Obanko communities in an Inri local government area of Enugu State have benefited from gifted power tiler machines and farming pills. The gesture is a collaboration between the state government and the Nigerian Community Action for Resilience and Economic Stimulus NGKs. The report is now ready. The move by the state government to transition from PMS to CNG means of transportation, the Transport Commissioner said will help cushion the effect of fuel price hike in the country. He disclosed that the state government has entered into a partnership agreement with a private firm for the conversion, with plans concluded to buy buses as well as provide a conducive and enabling environment for the private sector to invest in the transport space. The Secretary to the State Government, Professor Chidebere Onya, also said the ESCO had approved the creation of a new ministry called Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources to serve as a supervising ministry to handle all state government engagements in energy and mineral resources. The government functionaries further explained that these initiatives are in line with Governor Mba's commitment to improve the living standard of the people and grow the state's economy. In Enugu, Chika Ugu, NTA News. African leaders must show greater commitment to good governance and development that will positively change the current global negative image of Africa and help reverse the humiliation, disrespect and dehumanization Africans face globally. This was a submission of Professor Edward Erhabe in his inaugural lecture entitled Nurturing the Umbilical Cord, Historicizing the Diaspora Factor in the Developmental Metrics of Africa. Jude Abugu has details. The lecture, which is a result of over a decade's research and intellectual exercise in the African diaspora and American history studies is premised on the ties that continue to exist between the African diaspora. This, the inaugural lecturer, Edi Irabe, illustrated with historical evidence. Africans in the diaspora have always maintained their umbilical cord in the continent and have worked to give back to Africa. Africans now owe it to them to enjoy and benefit both materially and psychologically from the development Africans we make. He, however, regrets that corruption, nepotism, tribalism, and bad governance have continued to truncate the dreams diaspora Africans had for the continent. African states should put in place appropriate policies and enact laws that will facilitate African diaspora involvement in Africa. Most of them now, maybe they don't, when they, once they are in the diaspora, they haven't come back. But now, they, with good governance, they'll be encouraged to come back. We must keep in touch with those in the diaspora. We must remember our roots. More people who are in diaspora will always remember their origin and help to develop their place. Professor Edward Eragwe joined the University of Benin in 1982 as an assistant lecturer and rose through the rank to become a full professor in 2012. In Benin, Jude Abugu, NTA News. Let's take another break. More reports shortly. Thanks for joining us again. As more houses are submerged by above erosion, residents are keeping vigil as palpable fear grip them on whose house is next. Kelechi Okata has an update.
coming to 8 year old by innocent Odinakachi is afraid that the only house he built during his years in service is about to be submerged by the ravaging erosion. His family has mobilized him with over 4 million naira to reinforce the erosion and protect his home from the erosion. I've been calling, pleading that they should come and do something about it. But up to now, no, no, nothing is done. Even last uh, month, the governor came here by himself and saw everything by himself. And they told me that in, in weeks to come, that he will, he, he will start work here. But up to now, we, we're still expecting. Everybody that lives around this place is afraid of this area again. Nobody comes here again. Houses, shops, and even a worship center have so far been washed away by the erosion, which has equally cut off many from accessing their houses. By Innocent narrated how many unsuspecting Nigerians have fallen into the deep frequently, calling on the ecological fund, Abia State Government, to save them. In Aba, Kelechokata, NTN News. Sports update is best. We begin with weightlifting. President Nigeria Weightlifting Federation Abdul Ibrahim says the federation will build on the gains of the recently concluded Paris Paralympic Games, where Nigeria's para weightlifters enjoy a remarkable outing by breaking records. Speaking with journalists in Abuja, the president said the federation will be looking to involve the athletes in more national and international competitions to provide avenue for the lifters to be exposed to modern facilities. Lessons has been learned and then when we now we are going to start again and see how we can uh, win medals in Los Angeles. You, we have always been doing that. We've always won a lot of medals for the nation. To football, a total of 30 women coaches have been presented certificate for the first ever three-module CAFC licensed coaching course after the course ended in Abuja. Organized by the Nigerian Football Federation, NFF, the coaching course saw more than a dozen former stars of the Super Falcons involved in the intensive classroom and on-field session that saw the coaching proceed on internship with clubs after each of the modules, with the third modules ending with examination at the NFF FIFA Gold Project, Moshu Dabiola National Stadium, Abuja. Away from Nigeria, African Footballer of the Year, Victor Simhe, opened his goal-scoring account for Turkey side Galatasaray in their 3-3 draw with Kasim Spasa. Osime scored twice to put his name on the score sheet to ensure that the draw solidified Kaleta Seri position on the top of the Super Liga with 19 points for clear of Samson's Paul. And finally, Terry Harper reignited her career by appointing fellow Britain Renon Dizon in Sheffield to become a true weight world champion. The 27 year old controlled the distance and landed accurate counter punches to win the WBO lightweight crown at the Canon Medical Arena. 29-year-old Dizon momentarily hurt Harper in the sixth round, but it was an otherwise dominant performance from the Doncaster Harper. In a must-win fight, Harper claimed a unanimous decision with score of 97-93, 97-93, and 96-94. With sport update, Suleiman Musa, NTA News. And that's Nationwide. Thank you for watching. I am Minna Daniels.